Hey guys, this is Adam for FXC79.com and welcome back to the Java tutorials. I apologize for it being such a long time in between tutorials. Uh, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to do videos. However, I am planning on returning to the Java tutorial series um, and then later possibly making a few more videos with actual applications of Java uh, using different sorts of um, different sorts of programs to uh, so that we can figure out how Java actually works in the real world. Um, so what we're going to work on today is uh, loops. We got all kinds of loops in Java. They're just so much fun. We got for loops, we got while loops, we got do while loops, and it's just a whole ton of fun. So let's just go ahead and set up our class here. We've got public class basic Java, and we've imported the scanner utility. So public static void main string oops args and as always don't worry about that <clears throat> just yet I will explain this entire header but we need to uh, know a few more things before I can explain it in detail let's make our scanner object scanner sc equals new scanner system dot in and what we're going to work on first is the for loop. So for loops, um, generally, whenever you'll see them, they will have a very, very specific layout. Um, it really doesn't uh, diverge much from the norm of how people use it. So I'll just go ahead and show you that. Uh, first, we're just going to ask um, system.out.println enter a number. And uh, int a equals sc dot next int to grab that number. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to have a auto increment system, which means that every time it is run, we'll, we're going to add one to this number. So say we entered one up here, then it's going to go, it's going to print out one, two, three, four, five, up to uh, ten, ten numbers after what you entered. Um, so normally what you would have to do is do um, system out print in uh, a and then you would have to do this ten more times a plus one if I can actually type sorry I gotta turn my lights on my keyboard so I can actually see a plus two, you have to do it ten times. So that's not efficient. This is very inefficient. Uh, what we can do is put this in a loop, and every single time it goes through, we're going to add one to it. So what we're going to do is do four, uh, start a for loop, open parentheses, int i equals zero. Now you don't have to use i, but you'll see that most commonly people use i when setting up for loops. Colon, um, i is less than or equal to 9. Now, you're going to ask yourself, wait, you just said 10. So what is 10? Why, why, why are you putting 9, you know? Um, the thing is, um, actually, I think this is going to have to be, yeah, that'll be less than or equal to. So you notice that in the human language, or I guess it's not really a language, but in, in mathematics, we typically don't start at 0. We usually start at 1. If you're going to start, if you you say someone just start counting at me. They're gonna, they're not going to go zero, one, two. They're just going to go one, two. But in programming, we typically start at zero, and that that uh, applies to a lot of things. Um, I just took spaces out there, by the way. I wasn't changing anything. Um, uh, like arrays, for example, which I'll go over in a couple of tutorials. So we typically start at zero, which means that if we're going zero to ten. That's actually 11 numbers right there, if you think about it. 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 11 numbers if you count it off in your fingers. So to actually get 10 times through, um, we go to 9. Now, if you're kind of confused by this, there's a simple way around this. Just set this equal to 1 and this equal to 10. And that way you know that you're getting actual uh, 10, 10 loops through this for loop. However, um, it's... I wouldn't say it's frowned upon, but it's just the normal way of starting at zero. You're always going to want to be able to start at zero 
um, in a for loop and still know how many loops you're going to get through. Now, what we're doing here is i is less than or equal to 9. And um, the reason we do that is because if we did i equals 9, um, uh, that would, wouldn't make sense, first of all. You're, you're setting um, a equal to 9. However, if we did i equals equals 9, also, that wouldn't make sense. You're like, 4 into i equals i. What? No. It doesn't. That's for ifs. Um, so, what we could do is put doesn't equal to. Oops. Um, doesn't equal 9. But that would only give us 0 to 8. Because as soon as i equals 9, it's going to stop. It's not going to do any more. So, what we're going to do is just do less than or equal to. So, that'll go... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, because it's less than or equal to. So that may be a little bit of a brain confuser to you, but just stay with me for uh, now, and you'll eventually see how this works. And what we're going to do is I++. plus plus. And if I haven't talked about it before, I'm not really sure if I have. Um, plus plus is just a simple way of saying I equals I plus 1. So if you think about it, <coughs> we have 0, and then so if you did... Uh, 0 equals 0 plus 1. That would be 1, right? Because 0 equals 0 plus 1. So basically we have, an in, we have a, a, a variable here. Instead of 0, we have i. And so every time it goes through, it's going to increment i by 1. So that's plus plus. Um, that's just a simple shorthand of doing it that Java understands and makes it very helpful. We could just as easily put i equals i plus 1, or we could do i plus equals 1. But instead of doing all of those, we just do i plus plus, i plus plus, because it's simple, it's short, it fits in the for loop, and that's what you'll see most people doing. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll get inside this for loop right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to do system dot out dot println um, a plus i so on the first run through it's just going to print out a because i is zero so you're going to have whatever your number was plus zero which is going to equal your your number but every time after that as soon as this for loop is done right here it's going to add one to i actually as it starts it's going to add one to i um, but not the first time so uh, it's, you can think about it as it ends, it's going to add 1 to i. So the next time it goes through this for loop, you're going to have a plus 1 instead of a plus 0. So that's going to give you your number plus 1. So that may be a little bit confusing. Let's just go ahead and run this real quick. Oh, I hope I'm not. Okay, good. Enter a number. Let's just put, for the sake of this, let's just put 0. It's going to put 1, 2, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right? So that, can, that proves to you that on the first run, it's 0 plus 0, and it printed out 0. Then we had 0 plus 1, and we have an auto-incrementing system. And you can see this thing right here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 lines, as opposed to the 10 lines that you would otherwise have to have um, incrementing this uh, variable by 1 each time. So what you're doing is you're saving yourself a lot of space, and you're having a variable that you can use over and over again, just incrementing itself each time. Uh, so it's a very, very effective way to do something. Um, so that's basically the for loop. We'll leave that for now. <clears throat> and then uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to do a do while loop. We'll skip the while loop for now. Um, and I'll just show you how to do a do while loop. Um, basically what these are useful for, at least in my um, usage of them, I always use them as a checking if you want to do something again. Asking the user, would you rather, would you want to do something again? So, what we're going to do is we're going to define string um, ants equals null. And if I hadn't said anything about that before, null is just a placeholder. It means there's nothing there. Um, and then we're going to do um, do, and we'll put a bracket around all of this. And then as soon as the bracket is over, you're going to see here, it's going to say, oh, well, you had a do, why don't you have a while? So that rem that reminds you, while ants 
dot equals ignore case. I'm not sure if I've talked about this before because it's been forever since I've done a uh, Java tutorial. But basically, to check equality of a string, instead of doing equals equals, you do dot equals. And we can also throw in the ignore. It works just like this, dot equals. But that means that if someone types, um, so you have in here equals, or uh, yes. But if someone puts, if someone's input is yes, 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 anything like that, then it will be false because you're not exactly equaling what is typed here. We can get around that by typing dot equals ignore case. And that means this yes, this yes, this yes, they're all the same because they're all the same characters. So that's just an easy way of doing that. <coughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to say, well, you know, every single time str answer is going to be no, you're just going through here. It's obviously going to be no. So what we'll do is we'll ask the user system dot out print ln would you like to run this again? And then we'll do ants equals sc.next. So basically, what we've done is we've defined this variable up here. And the reason we've defined it up here as opposed to here is because um, of the scope of variables. Now, that means that if you put string ants down here, it's contained within this for loop or this uh, do loop so only inside these two brackets is that variable answer actually or ans string answer is actually a recognized variable otherwise outside that this has no idea wh what is a variable like it wants me to create a local variable it wants me to put it up there so it can actually see what answer is and as, if we do that we can see that this down here if this is actually outside this, then both the while loop and the um, inside the do while loop can actually read this one variable, and they all know what it is. So I'll just put this as null. Um, when working with strings, I typically put them as null instead of just defining them like this. Um, just kind of out of habit. Um, a lot of the times, if you're working with uh, variables and you um, <clears throat> and you're testing them against something and say you have an error in your code and you forgot to ask or you forgot to set the variable um, equal to something then you will get a uh, null uh, usage error I'm not even sure if that's the right word to use usage but um, um, you'll get a uh, an error in your code that tells you exactly where your error is and also um, why it uh, because it's null and if it's null then you'll know because the variable has never changed from when you defined it so you need to go back in your code and redefine um, what answer is so here we can clearly see that we are defining it but I like to just have that up there just so I know um, you know sometimes it'll say answer has not been defined answer blah 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 um, so we'll just put that there and then we will see if we run the program, in turn number, we'll put 5, and we say, would you like to run this again? Yes, enter a number. Because we've asked, uh, we said, do all this while answer equals yes. And the great thing about this is this works as many times as you want. So if you say no, we can actually redefine answer to equal no, and then it will do the check. It will say, while answer, does it equal yes? No, it doesn't. So we'll just stop. We'll jump out of this for or this do while loop and we're done so hope that makes a little bit of sense to you just try out do while loops and for loops by yourself it'll be it'll become a lot more apparent to you and the last thing I'll go over is pretty easy uh, based on what we've already talked about it's the while loop so basically it's just while oh let me talk about this first the difference between a for loop and a do while loop is that the do loop, do while loop, sorry, actually, um, shut up. Um, the do while loop actually checks it after the loop has finished. So after we've done all this, it's going to check if the person's answer equaled yes. 
Now we wouldn't want that starting at the we wouldn't let one a for loop checking if it was equal to yes because um, it's equal to null up here. You need to check it after the user's input has been uh, has been entered. So <clears throat> real quick, we'll do a while loop. So while um, i is less than two. So that's, oh, forgot the, okay, so this hasn't been defined yet. So we'll do while int i is less than, forgot to define int i, of course. So we'll do int i equals zero. While int i equal, is less than two, system.out.print ln i is less then two, just to show you how this works, and then we'll do i plus plus. So this should only run run one time. Actually, sorry, it should run two times because i is going to be zero the first time, and then it's going to, sorry, be incremented, <coughs> and then it's going to run through the second time. It's going to be one, which is also less than two, and it's going to be incremented again, and it'll be two, and it's going to go. Well, is two less than two? No, it's not. So we're not going to run this. It's going to ask if we'd like to run it again. Let's do ahead. Go ahead and do this. Enter a number three. Blah blah blah. Oop, did I forget? Oh yeah, yeah. I have to put this up here. Sorry. Before we actually ask the thing. That was stupid. Because we're asking if we would like to continue before we had actually finished our program. Um, three. And then we're gonna do i is less than two. So it prints out twice because it's going zero and then one. So this is a simple while loop. It's a for loop, and this is a do while loop. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, just uh, check it out. What's great about this also, if you're checking for one thing, you only want yes. You, that's the only reason you would be running again. So anything else that the user entered is a no. You know, if if, if you really wanted to, <clears throat> you could check if it, if it equals no, if it equals um, anything else but yes or no, then you could say, oh, that's not an option. But the great thing about this is that the only thing you're looking for is a yes here, and anything else is just, you know, whatever. You're crazy. So, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, go ahead and play around with it, and uh, I hope it does. See you later.